Michael, you said that uh, you could, uh, you wanted this fight for a long time. You told me, obviously, this, this is a fight you wanted since he was bantamweight champ. Did the fight go pretty much how you thought it would in your head? Yes. Um, even to the extent of uh, me having a little bit difficult time with his distance, just uh, figuring it out and him popping me with a few jabs. Um, but eventually I was able to get inside and uh, you know, really take a hold of my power and uh, you know, the banging range, which I love. That, that uppercut was landing for you pretty, pretty heavily. Was there something in, the, in his stand-up you saw an opening for that? No, it, it was all just playing it by ear. I, I literally have not watched one single second of tape for this fight. It was just uh, me seeing his previous fights and knowing that me, as me, I could beat him. And I just went in there and uh, played it by ear. And that's what I was seeing while I was in there. Did you take more damage from Miguel or from her being at the end? <laughs> uh, I think Miguel. He, he popped me a few times. My eyes are uh, a little uh, swollen here. Michael, you said that you, uh, you know, you're going to leave it up to the UFC to put you when you get into the title race, things like that. But Miguel Torres is a very big name, former champion. I mean, now that you've got a big knockout, first round knockout, I mean, how do you feel like this stacks you up in that division? Um, I feel like it stacks me up on the public guys pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know where it'll put me on the rankings or what my next move will be or what the UFC will have me go next. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, enough to get some public recognition. I don't know what it'll take me though. 21. If you get the bonus money, what are you gonna buy? House. <laughs> that's uh, that's the next thing because they just did taxes and they ripped me to pieces, but I have a house. So that's the next thing. Yeah. You are, this sport is one of the crappiest jobs you can ever have unless you have fun. And I really like to try to have fun as much as you can. Um, in the midst of someone punching you in the face for money, um, you have to find something to win in it. Job and stuff. So I try to enjoy what I can. Michael, you said that uh, you wanted to you wanted to fight him and you knew you'd beat him four years ago. How much did visualization and you know your mental edge going into this fight, how much did that help you? You seemed like you were extremely confident and having that knowledge four years ago that you thought you could beat him, how much did that help you tonight? You know, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Um, in, in one aspect, um, you know, it kind of prepares me. Um, in, in another way, it's uh, it, it kind of puts more pressure on me, you know. It, I, yeah, it's, it's like I remember, uh, you know, I can't even remember the guy's name, um, but looking at someone on TV, you know, for years and years, and then you find the fight, you know, it, it, it's, you're kind of starstruck looking across the cage at this guy you've been watching for such a long time, who is, you know, the best in the world. And uh, in, in a way, it, it's a disadvantage and also an advantage. It, it's, it's an advantage strategically if I can control the nerves, it makes the nerves longer.